What once belonged to imagination now enters our homes with steady footsteps. The question is not what technology can do, but how much of ourselves we give to it. Every year, new devices arrive with promises of ease, wonder, and connection. Yet beneath their polished glass and hidden circuits lies something more profound. They do not simply sit in our hands or on our desks. They reshape the way we move, rest, and even think. This is no longer about gadgets. It is about life itself, gently rewritten by code, sensors, and silent decisions made in the background. The shape of screens. For decades, screens have been rigid. A flat surface, a framed window, a tool that never bent to meet us. They showed us worlds, but they never changed their own. That quiet age is ending. At this year's show, screens no longer stood still. They shifted, stretched, and breathed like living things. Samsung revealed a display that could rise and fall on command. One moment, it was smooth and flat, like any ordinary panel. The next, certain parts lifted upward, sculpting small hills and ridges from light itself. Imagine watching a landscape where the mountains swell from the surface, or a medical scan where organs seem to rise into three dimensions. This was not a trick of graphics, but a body of glass and pixels that truly moved. It felt less like watching and more like touching. Lenovo carried the same spirit in another form. Their rollable PC kept its screen hidden until needed. Then, with a quiet motion, the panel unrolled upward, taller, and taller, like a curtain of light unfolding. The software inside was taught to follow along, stretching apps into new shapes without breaking. Work, play, and browsing all flowed from one size to another, as if the machine itself understood flexibility. Both visions hint at a shift. Screens are no longer passive rectangles, waiting to be filled. They react, adapt, and anticipate. They lean toward us in ways that feel strangely alive. The bond between person and device deepens when the device begins to move on its own. A screen that stretches, a display that grows. These changes may seem small, but they carry weight. They ask us to see not just what is on the surface, but the surface itself, alive, shifting, and closer to us than ever before. Machines that learn the home. The home has always been the most personal space, a place shaped by memory and routine. Yet now, even within its walls, machines are learning to take part in our daily rhythm. No longer silent tools, they listen, adjust, and sometimes act before we even ask. SwitchBot's household robot is one example. It does not just sweep dust from the floor. It moves carefully around furniture, remembering where tables and chairs sit, adjusting its path with each pass. It can carry a small plate to another room, freshen the air, or pause to watch a pet when its owner is away. Each day, it becomes slightly more aware, as if the house itself is mapping itself into its memory. Bosch brought a different kind of presence with its smart crib. At first glance, it is only a bed for an infant, but hidden inside are sensors that follow the rise and fall of breath the beat of a tiny heart. If the child stirs or the pattern falters, the crib rocks gently or sends an alert before danger grows. A piece of furniture transforms into something like a guardian, holding more than just a body. It holds trust. Elsewhere, smaller devices extended this same idea. A smart cane that guides the blind through crowded streets, pulsing gently when obstacles appear, a fountain that cleans water for a thirsty pet, while tracking how often it drinks. A tag clipped to a collar that follows a wandering animal across city blocks or fields. Each of these machines steps quietly into corners of life we once thought private. They do not shout their presence, but weave themselves into the background of living. And as they do, they change what it means to feel at home. Immersion and Play Play has always been more than a distraction. It is where people test boundaries, chase wonder, and feel alive. At the show, new ways of play appeared, bending sound, sight, and touch into a single thread. Sony revealed an entertainment system that wraps players in light and vibration. 
LED walls surround the body, while haptic guns respond with weight and force. Every step a player takes shifts the sound, the shadows, the air itself. It is less like a game, more like stepping into another place. Others chose smaller forms of escape. Acer's handheld machine shrinks the power of a full computer into the palm. Old barriers of space vanish, as large games once tied to desks can now travel anywhere. Even nostalgia found a seat here. Atari and My Arcade offered consoles filled with familiar titles, built not only for memory, but also for the curiosity of new hands. In all of this, play becomes layered. Some chase the thrill of realism, others reach back toward childhood. Yet in every case, technology listens and responds, shaping joy in ways that feel increasingly alive. Bodies and minds connected. Not all technology lives on a desk or in a room. Some of it clings to the body, listening to muscles and thoughts. A small wristband, worn like an ornament, can now read the faintest movements of an arm. The signals travel through skin and nerves, turned into commands for a screen. A flick of a finger becomes a keystroke. A quiet shift of the wrist can guide a cursor. What once demanded hardware now responds to the body itself. Headphones found their path inward. Instead of only carrying music, one pair studies brain waves. Focus and distraction are measured, then reflected in real time. In a demo, the speed of a rocket rose and fell with a person's concentration. Play and thought became one. Watches and rings also joined this silent observation. They measure steps, heartbeats, stress, and even the sound of sleep. Some go further, building soundscapes to ease rest, or tracking the food on a plate to mark calories and nutrition. The body, once private, is being translated into streams of numbers and predictions. Comfort and health may grow, but with them rises another question. How much of ourselves do we allow these machines to know? The road ahead. On the road, machines are beginning to think for us. BMW introduced a display that stretches across the windshield in one smooth band. It shows speed, navigation, and warnings, yet it does so with restraint. Instead of flooding drivers with numbers, it filters, choosing only what matters. The glass ahead no longer simply reveals the street, it becomes a quiet guide. Honda imagined a car that not only drives, but also learns. Their Zero Saloon studies the paths its owner takes, remembers patterns, and shapes battery use around them. Efficiency becomes personal, almost like the car knows the rhythm of its passengers' days. Volvo took a longer view. Their promise is not only about luxury, but survival. Fossil-free engines, safer journeys, and new roads built with change in mind. It is a vision less about speed and more about the kind of world we hope to leave behind. Even smaller movements join this shift. Segway's new e-bikes blend navigation, theft protection, and silent power, making daily travel lighter and freer. Step by step, the journey ahead is no longer only ours to choose. Cars and bikes, guided by intelligence, begin to carry not just bodies, but the trust of those inside them. Work farms, and machines of scale. Beyond homes and highways, technology is reshaping entire industries. NVIDIA's latest processors are built not only for faster graphics, but for the hidden labor of machines. Their new systems power robots, cars, and research labs, pushing tasks once human into silicon hands. The promise is speed, but the weight is trust. On the fields, John Deere revealed tractors that steer themselves across soil, spraying only where weeds grow and saving crops with precision. A job once slow and exhausting now unfolds with near-automatic care. Farmers become overseers, watching as machines learn the patterns of land. Panasonic turned attention to supply chains, weaving algorithms into the path goods take across the world. Their model aims to predict, to balance, to ease disruption. In warehouses and ports, decisions once made by managers 
now move through circuits. Even Dell signaled change by reshaping its product lines into simpler categories, a reminder that beneath the surface of rebranding lies a deeper shift. Computers are no longer just tools for work. They are pieces of a system that watches, learns, and quietly alters the pace of entire industries. The Quiet Companions Among the brightest displays and loudest machines, there were quieter figures. Robots shaped not for industry or speed, but for presence. Unrise G1 stood tall yet gentle, built to carry light objects, to follow commands, to serve in silence. It was not power that defined it, but patience. Nearby, a fox-like creation named Mirokai wandered the floor. It did not roar or shine. Instead, it greeted, guided, and offered comfort. Designed to help patients or guests, it blended the softness of an animal with the logic of a machine, a companion more than a worker. Even RCA's robotic dog found its purpose. It could dance, patrol a home, and send alerts when something felt wrong. Over time, it learned voices, languages, and habits, as though it wished to belong. These machines do not replace human bonds, yet they move close to them. They wait in corners, ready to listen or help leaving us to wonder how far companionship can be shaped by code. The lights fade, the booths close, yet the echo of these machines lingers. They are no longer just inventions on display, they are invitations into another way of living. From stretchable screens to cribs that watch over sleep, from cars that remember routes to robots that wait like companions, each step draws us deeper into a world where technology breathes alongside us. Some will welcome it, others will fear it, but none can deny its steady approach. The question remains, are we shaping these tools or are they quietly shaping us?